guys, welcome back to my channel. So tonight's video is gonna be a Spawn Night Chit Chat video. I am in desperate need of a face mask. I have not done one since maybe like a week or two before Aurora was born and my skin is like not liking it very much. With that being said, if you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. If you've never watched one of these videos before, it's basically a video in which we sit down and we do a face mask together. My favorite line of face masks comes from Freeman Feeling Beautiful. These are like a couple dollars each at Walmart. These have been a staple in my beauty routine for such a long time. This is a brand new one I found at Five Below. This is the Hydrating Glacier Water and Pink Peony Gel Cream Mask. Supposedly, this is a leave-on mask that instantly calms and softens her glowing skin. This is for all skin types. A lot of the masks from the Freemium Feeling Beautiful line are for all skin types. So the first thing I want to talk about is James Charles' new collaboration with you guessed it, Morphe. Another day, another Morphe release, another Morphe collab, and it's just like, ugh. The palette looks beautiful. The video that James had released, or the announcement for the palette, was really, really cool, very different from what we've seen from other influencers in collaboration with Morphe, obviously. He did his own little vocal thing for his own release, which I thought was pretty cool. I don't know, it looks pretty, it really does. It's very eye-catching, and I've seen quite a few people who have been against Morphe kind of like, eyeballing this palette in particular. I'm kind of questioning myself and how strongly I feel about Morphe for this palette. I kind of want to pick it up just to see if it's worth the money and give you guys a review on it. So if you guys would like me to, I will absolutely do that for you guys. But you guys know how I feel about Morphe. It just, oh God. So the other thing I want to talk about very briefly is, of course, the new Thomas Halbert video because I was very confused, especially in the first few minutes. I was like, wait, what, like, what, what is this? One of the first things that annoyed me about this video was his little comment about how, guys, I'm just 21, I'm still a kid. What is it with these people who are in their 20s, 21 years old and up, saying we're just kids still? I'm sorry. When you are 21 years of age, you are legally an adult in the United States. I don't know about anywhere else, but here you are legally an adult. So I apologize, but in my viewpoints, in my opinion, there's no excuse. Of course you're gonna make mistakes. Of course you're gonna fuck up, we all do. We all fuck up all the time, you know what I mean? Especially me, I fuck up so much, it's hilarious, honestly. But having that as an excuse is just, no. There's, it's not, it's not a viable excuse for what happened, you know? No matter what his intentions were when he made this video, which we all know that we all, at least a good portion of us, myself included, I myself felt like his video was very much needed because the message itself was very important. And I, I mentioned that in my last video on the situation. But when it became apparent that it was literally just to garner like attention or sympathy or whatever the case may be, I was just like, ugh. Like this kind of message does not need to be used to get that kind of thing from anybody. You know what I mean? If you're gonna talk about it, at least truly stand by what you're saying. And he says in this video that he stood by everything he said in that video, but he does agree that it was the right message from the wrong messenger, which yeah, obviously. He said that he stands by everything he said in that video, and I'm assuming that includes everything he had talked about when it came to Jeffree Star and the racist comments and things like that. So I'm wondering if anything else is going to come of this. It was a very cringy video in some places watching him talk about these things and try to make excuses for the things he had done. He mentions Gabby's Snapchat rant, which I have here on my channel. I'll have a link down below if you have not watched that yet. Personally, I think they all are snakes in their own ways, their own separate ways. It may not be as obvious as some people, but I feel like they all are snakes in some way or another. But I fully believe everything he said when he said that he believed that if he was gonna be friends with these people, he needed to have tea, especially with the popular people who was, of course, Jeffree Star, Manny MUA, all the larger influencers. I mean, come, <laughs> I completely believe that 100%. So I don't know, what do you guys think about his video? I really couldn't make it past the 19 minute mark. I watched as much as I possibly could. It just went downhill from there for me. Personally, 
So I don't know, let me know what you guys think down below. And the last two things I wanna talk about kind of go hand in hand. The first thing is uh, this tweet from Michael Weist, who, as we all remember, is the person who basically put on TanaCon back in June. So his tweet says, as some of you will receive emails today, I want to share some updates. As of October 17th, 2018 at 4.34 p.m. Central Standard Time, Chapter 7 bankruptcy has been filed. Within the next 60 days, Good Times Entertainment LLC will be dissolved. It's time to share the official Tenacon documentary. According to this hilarious tweet, I laughed when I saw this, guys. Like, I was dying laughing. According to this tweet, um, he filed for bankruptcy and he is releasing the official Tanacon documentary and I I'm just I don't understand why this documentary his documentary his what he believes to be the official Tanacon documentary I don't understand why that's necessary we are now in November this was back in June when Tanacon happened so why he thinks he's going to have any kind of success in releasing this documentary and he very well could he very well could release this thing and it could very well beat the shane dawson series on tanacon we have no fucking clue but i highly highly doubt that and i don't see things going well for him or ending well for him on that matter especially because no one believes him Everyone thinks he's kind of a dick, to be honest, including myself, especially for the way he acted, the way he went about things with TanaCon on his end, at least. So to me, it's kind of comical, almost, to see him announcing this official TanaCon documentary. Now, I could be bashing this entire project and it could be an hour long video with fresh, steaming hot ass tea, despite the fact that the subject matter itself is older than Jesus himself, he could have clips of Tana saying some more fucked up shit. Like we don't know what to expect in this documentary. I'm hoping if he's gonna release it, it's gonna be worth people's time because you all know, I know myself, I am a nosy ass person. I'm gonna fucking watch this video. You know what I mean? If it even comes out, I don't even know if it's a real thing. So we'll see what happens. There's not been a release date set or anything, or at least not one stated on Twitter or anywhere, not that I know of. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen or when to expect it, but I will be watching and yes, I will be making a video on it if it does come out. Now, lastly, speaking of Miss Tana Mojo, <laughs> yesterday was Halloween and Tana put this picture on Twitter And it had some people scratching their heads, but also like really questioning this girl's sanity even further. This situation is not so much about the outfit. It's what she labeled it as, as far as what the outfit is supposed to be. Jojo Siwa is, I think like a 14, 15 year old girl. And Tana decided to go as Ho-Ho Siwa for Halloween. And people were like, um, what the fuck are you doing? People were saying you're sexualizing a child. This is fucking disgusting. Like, what are you doing? Like, it just, there were a lot of very angry people and this is what Tana had to say. So she says, hey guys, saw some tweets about my Jojo costume and I just want to clarify before things get crazy. Jojo is a great friend of mine and I would never intend to sexualize her. I literally think that anything like that is gross as fuck. It was just like a slutty schoolgirl costume, Girl Scout, or a cheerleader to me. I totally didn't see it that way and would never want to. I love JoJo and making crazy Halloween costumes and she was telling me to do it. I just want to let you know my standpoint on that before I see anything else. I do agree with the majority of people saying that she could have just went as like, I don't know, an EDC girl or something, you know what I mean? Like a festival look or something. She didn't have to say ho ho siwa because everyone is gonna react the way they've reacted, you know what I mean? And Shane Dawson was called out because he retweeted it and people are like, what are you doing? And it just, it turned out to be a mess basically. But at the end of the day, I mean, what else would you expect from someone like Tana to be quite fucking honest, you know what I mean? Like we shouldn't expect anything less from this girl as far as this. So yeah, what do you guys think about everything discussed in tonight's video? I'm sorry if I'm kind of just low energy. With that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new, please subscribe if you have not already and I will see you guys in the next video. I love you guys so, so much. Bye.